What's up, fish tank people? Dawson's Fish Tanks bringing it to you, talking about the better tanks. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I didn't talk for three videos straight. It was absolutely amazing, but apparently you all want me to run my big old yap, so that's what I'm gonna do. Today, we're gonna talk about the substrate, the water filtration, the plant growth, and the lights of all three of these aquariums. I've got some good news and good stuff to show you, and I've got some bad news and some depth to show you. Here's how it's going down. First things first, I want to get a little woo-woo with you. I've been making videos for almost 10 years. It was absolutely fabulous to be silent, get in the flow, and do these. Now I'm coming back through and talking about them, but uh, the silence is bliss, to be completely honest with you. I wanted to do individual styles on each of these aquariums with very limited number of species, and I'm going to talk about what's working, what's not working, and some things you can watch out for in your own aquariums today. But just from a high level, like being quiet was absolutely awesome. Awesome. But now it's time to run my mouth, so here we go. First things first, this tank was set up uh, 28 days before the filming of this video. So this one was the first one, second one, third one, all of them are a week apart. This aquarium right here was set up with dirt. I use dirt, dirt don't hurt, dirt is the bomb when it comes to your substrate. However, on top of here, I wanted to use a finer grade of gravel. I wanted to use black diamond, black blasting sand, something like that a lot of people try to use. This. I don't typically use it and I'm gonna show you exactly why. This substrate right here has a fine, fine, fine look to it. The problem is that the dirt that goes underneath it actually is a little bit larger and a little bit easier to float up, light up, come up out of the bottom of the aquarium. Why are we dirtying the tank? Plants absorb four to 400 times more nutrients through their roots than through their stems and leaves. From a plant, uh, from like, just like the, the way a plant is built, this makes sense, right? If you were going to eat, wouldn't you want to eat where you are like attached and like connected to where all of the food could possibly be versus the water column where things could change? So just my thoughts on kind of the way plant growth is, but I can show you in this aquarium how it's going. And we're at that like three week mark where everything kind of figures out what's going on. This tank right here has a bunch of Echinodorus. This is a Uragonensis sword right here. Swords, Amazon swords, heavy root feeder. This is above water growth leaf that came off. I intentionally left uh, out and floating around in the aquarium. The sword that I've absolutely been totally in love with is Echinodorus quadricostatus. I mean, as if the name isn't cool enough, the way it grows is even cooler. Echinodorus quadricostatus sending off new runners here right here, also a little something going on here. And then most importantly, the very center of the plant is where all the action's happening. You're gonna see all this outside stuff that's not important to you. What you wanna focus on is the new growth coming up from the center of the plant. Look at the center of the plant. The center of the plant is going to tell you everything that's going on. Do not look at the outer leaves. I know that's counterintuitive, but you wanna look at the very center where all the new growth is happening. The problem is I use the black diamond blasting sand or whatever. Stuff is super cheap, got it at Tractor Supply. I wanna say it was about 20 bucks. However, it's just kind of a little bit more messy. We move these tanks up here. This is typically where I do all my work. I don't typically make videos up here or have betta fish up here, but I'm thinking about it now because I actually really like the look of them up here. But when these were moved, I did not give my man uh, Trevor the proper advice of how to move a dirted tank that, that falls back on the leader. But I said, hey, move us up here. And we stirred it up pretty good. However, I've got not one but two aqua clears on here. Some of these filters are older than most of you watching this video. I've got two on here intentionally because this one doesn't need it. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Two of them are on here. By the time I'm done shooting this video, this tank will probably be clear. So I absolutely love the way this tank is going in and coming into its own. It's at that stage where it needs a little bit of a trim, but this plant right here, this is Pogo stamen stellata right here. Some people call it Pogo stamen octopus. It's got the nice long growth, easy plant, grows like crazy, gives you the nice contrast. Over here is Estrella stellata. Okay, this is a little bit fancier plant, a little more red. Generally speaking, when you have a plant that has more red on it, you're going to need a little bit more light. This is showing that a little bit, took a little bit harder of a beating than the Pogo stamen stellatum. Not as much color, a little more color, a little harder to keep. Oh, by the way, the betta fish right here, just straight up posting up in the middle of it, like, uh, I'm a boss. I've had this betta fish for quite a while. He actually lives in greenhouse 1.0. I don't know if you guys recall, but I actually have a greenhouse in my backyard that's gonna become a nice tranquil spot at some point. But right now we're focused on getting 2.0 wrapped up going into the winter, but betta fish, oh my goodness. Like, look at that fish. Like I'm making a video and a fish comes to the front on camera, like ready to rock. Absolutely love it. I feed them bug bites periodically. I don't feed them every day. I feed them like every other day, but uh, it's been nice actually having some fish 
around this bad boy right here. Some people talked about the flow. The only reason he's getting blown around this much because I got two filters on this tank because it just moved it. Generally, I only have one, and I think the fish is fine. I did a rant on this too. We're gonna talk about this in the next tank over here. I decided to go with three betta fish. Why? Because I love betta fish. How many videos can you make about betta fish, Dustin? Answer, a lot. I love betta fish because they are generally incredibly hardy. They also come from like not so great conditions in the pet store. And you can get a betta fish in any color of the ghetto rainbow. The betta fish that I selected here is a platinum betta, platinum like platinum pock, like pop, 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 awesome. If you didn't see my top five worst fish advice, click the link around here and check out that. But this fish and then this tank, this betta fish is a white fish because I wanted to go with a lot of contrast on here. I went with the black Estes grade gravel. This stuff is the more expensive stuff you actually buy at an aquarium store, but I like it because it's a larger grade, a little bit heavier. And underneath this tank, despite having absolutely zero plants in it, this substrate right here is doing a nice job holding down dirt that is underneath here. That's right, I dirted underneath this tank and I dirted underneath this tank for a reason because if I ever wanna rip it out or add plants or do something, I will have dirt already in there. So it's like a precautionary measure in case I decide I wanna plant it. I don't wanna plant it. I don't wanna plant it for this reason. This tank was, if you wanna say, inspired by the burning of the Amazon. I've been to the Amazon River. I have not been to the Brazil part of it, although I could go to on a tour to Manaus, but the Amazon is burning at a record rate. My wife is friends with somebody she runs with that's uh, from Brazil and she said it's been going on for a long time. It's just now getting worse. So if you want to say it's inspired, the Amazon is burning, no leaves on the trees. It's actually a really horribly sad topic and I'm trying to keep it upbeat with you all. Right here we've got a above the rim come in action. I learned this from my buddy Brian. He's got amazing aquariums. He also runs a UPS store where I ship out all my wholesale. He's the bomb. I love him. He still hasn't been over to 2.0, but whatever. This right here is intentionally done in front with the large manzanita driftwood, and then I put a little bit of small in the front. Think about it. If you're close to something, the trees look big. The further away you get, they're smaller. So I did the big driftwood in the front. I did the smaller stuff in the back. This is my actually favorite tank of all these, probably just because it's something different that I haven't done. I also absolutely love the platinum betta he does not care like does not mind anything at all going on with him but i mean look at the personality on that fish clearly he knows what's going on love it no there is no filter on this tank at this time because the filter was not needed we used it on that tank it doesn't matter switching them in between the two in my humble opinion but generally this does have a little bit of a filtration on it we use the aqua clears on these these are about seven gallon planet aquarium uh, cubes that I use for the free live aquascaping contest that I do at every treasure that I go to, including Aquachella and Aquatic Experience. Over here, and I saved the worst for last. This is the tank that I set up two weeks ago, so it's the most recent setup of all of these. I wanted to keep it real simple. I wanted to go like super low tech on this aquarium, and I've achieved that. All of these tanks are lit with one of my own 48 inch standard doubles. I've got a bajillion reviews on my LED lights and why they're different than my competitors, so I'd love for you to go check those out. But the long and the short of it is the spectral composition is good on the light. The lights grow the heck out of plants. And I wanted this tank to have a ridiculous plant load. So I dirted it and then I put pool filter sand on top. A 50 pound bag of pool filter sand is $10 at Sally Pool Supply. Go pick one up. With that said, the pool filter sand, like the blasting sand, is not quite as heavy as I would like for a uh, dirted tank. This tank was dirted, my man Trevor moved it. I didn't tell him when you pour the water in, you gotta lay the bag in like I did in this clip right here. So we got a little bit of the substrate above it. This tank, however, has bigger issues going on than that, and that is a dead betta fish. That's right, betta fish, betta fish, however you wanna pronounce it. This guy is no longer with us and I think he died yesterday. However, I wanna point out why he died. I took the dice, I rolled the dice, and I bought a fish that had flared up gills. I'm not happy about waving around dead fish in front of you all, but I think it's important. I tried to do a healer job on this guy. I bought him. He had something where his gills were always sticking out when I purchased him, okay? So I went out there and I bought a fish that I thought I could save. I couldn't. The betta fish died, had something to do with his big gills because his gills are flared out. They're supposed to be flat. They weren't, so he passed on. Now, what are the ramifications of this in this aquarium? Andrew was noticing when we were setting up for this wonderful video, that when I was dumping the water out of this tank, it smelled, okay? Smell is ammonia. Ammonia is coming all over here. It is now the water conditions have gotten worse. 
If ever you do not see a fish in your aquarium, it is extremely important to go and find the fish as quickly as possible, or you will create what I like to call the domino of death. Now, there was only one fish in here, so it didn't worry about killing other fish, but the ammonia spell, the bad one fish that died, and this is a problem because people generally start out the hobby in small aquariums, the one fish that died certainly caused an ammonia spike. I'm not testing the levels. We know by our noses that you can't smell through the video, that this tank right here actually had a nice high ammonia spike because the dead fish is now producing ammonia. The plants took a little bit of that as algae on them because there was too much light, too much excess nutrients in the water column, the dead fish producing the ammonia, caused the algae on here. So well, everything else is fine. The plants are balanced. No hardly any algae on that tank over there. It's been set up longer. This one right here, dead fish, uh, a little bit of algae coming on it, but this is actually Valnana and uh, Dwarf Sag, and they're actually growing really, really quickly. So I love the two skinny plants together. I just want this to be a uh, short plant in the front, tall plant in the back, and we will be replacing the beta, but when we replace them, we will not get one that has damaged gills along. It's like, I'm not gonna buy a fish that looks sick from the start. I did it, I thought it looked cool. I thought I could save him. I didn't. He started acting funky a week ago. There was nothing I could do. People might make a comment, well, why don't you have a heater on this tank? This place stays almost perfectly between, I don't know, 75 and 80. If the winter time comes, I'd actually have heaters in all of these, but for right now, it's not a big deal. What else can I tell you about these three tanks? They're absolutely awesome. They're a total riot, and I really enjoy playing with like little small aquariums. It's a lot of fun for me. I'd love to get your feedback on how I should roll doing more betta fish setups. Is it beta? Betta? Does it matter? Drop me a comment on the pronunciation. Make it an awesome week, and take off. Later.